So from March, the UK will begin issuing a new passport to mark their exit from the European Union. These new passports have been a source of great excitement for many in favour of Brexit, but there's also been a lot of confusion about them. So in this video, we're going to discuss the significance of the new design UK passports, as well as answering all of your questions about the passport. I'm sure you're sick of hearing us talk about Patreon, as we've plugged it a lot through February, but I promise it will stop at the end of the month. Anyway, we're in the process of getting two new full-time employees, so if you've been considering backing us through Patreon for a while now, it will be a really perfect time. With your help, we can grow the team further and create more higher quality content. To sign up and get more information about the perks you get in return, click the link in the description. In 1921, the UK introduced a blue passport for the first time. For many people, that design became iconic, a symbol of British freedom, travel, independence. Many grew up and made their first international trips using the original blue passport. So when the European Union forced the UK to change the design to burgundy, it was controversial with some. As such, changing it back to the original blue is to many a sign of sovereignty and a return of British powers post leaving the Union. Well, that would be true if the EU had enforced the colour change, as some outlets have insisted, but that's not completely accurate. The EU did encourage unity among member nations, encouraging them all to adopt a unified design, with one 1981 resolution saying that passports should be burgundy red in colour. However, one European Commission spokesman confirmed that resolutions are non-binding, and that there are still some differences between the various models of passports issued by the member states. In fact, Croatia has never changed their passport from its original colour, and they've said that they have no plans to do so. So it's actually never been enforced under EU law, although most passports did turn burgundy. Regardless of that, the burgundy design does still represent EU unity to many, so for those in favour of Brexit, changing back to the blue design harks back to the good old days. So in order to mark the UK's exit, Theresa May's government announced in 2017 that the country would be going back to the blue design once the UK was officially out. So now with the old stock of burgundy passports just about used up and the UK out of the union, the new design passports are set to begin phasing in from next month. And the government is keen to celebrate these new passports, with a press release announcing the return of the iconic blue passports. The press release also highlights that the colour is not the only change. In a first for the British passport, the back cover will also carry its own symbolic design, the floral emblems of England, Northern Ireland, Scotland and Wales embossed. The Home Secretary Preeti Patel is certainly excited for it, commenting that leaving the European Union gave us a unique opportunity to restore our national identity and forge a new path forward in the world. By returning to the iconic blue and gold design, the British passport will once again be entwined with our national identity, and I cannot wait to travel on one. So those are the new passports. They're changing colour and design to symbolise the UK's exit, and differentiate the country from a sea of burgundy passports, which exist throughout Europe. But it's not only the colour that's changing, according to the government with the Home Office tweeting that they'll be the most technologically advanced and environmentally friendly British passports ever. They're saying that it's super high-tech because of a hard-wearing, super-strength polycarbonate data page which contains innovative technologies embedded into the document to keep personal data secure. Essentially, this means that they'll be using new technology, printing and design techniques, which the government says will better protect against identity theft, fraud, and will even be harder to forge. The environmental credentials come from the fact that, well, the press release doesn't actually say that much, despite the tweet making the claim. It does say that there'll be carbon offsetting and a new manufacturing process will be used, but there's not a whole lot more detail than that. So I gave the Home Office a phone call, and then they told me to email them, which I did. And from subsequent conversations, it turns out that there's not a whole lot more information to give you. But if we do get any more information, we'll be sure to share it with you in the future. So these are things that the UK government is shouting about. The passport is more technological than ever, more environmental than ever, and more patriotic than ever. But what do you all want to know about the passports? We asked you over on Instagram, at TLDR News UK if you want a little plug in there. And be sure to follow us if you want to see your questions in future videos. What's the difference? Well, as we said, the primary difference is aesthetic and emotional, 
the change in colour is primarily to show a change in British attitudes and symbolise a shift in the UK's future. The colour obviously changes from burgundy to blue, and the European Union title is removed and replaced with British passport. Also, the government claims the tech, security and environmental advantages that we've already mentioned. Why blue? Essentially, just to hark back to the old British passport pre-EU shift. Also, blue is just a super popular passport colour being used by 81 different nations, from the US, Canada and Australia, to Iraq, Syria and North Korea. Will the government pay for our new passports? The short answer is no, but it's more complicated than that. Current Burgundy passports will continue to be valid until their natural expiry date. So, with up to 10 years of validity, it's possible that you might not end up handing over your Burgundy passport until 2030. When your passport expires, you'll apply for a new one as normal, and the new one you'll get sent will be a blue design. That means that the switchover will be phased in over the next 10 years as passports naturally expire. So no, the government won't pay for your new passport. You'll pay for it when your current passport expires as normal. How much will it cost me? As I said, you only need to pay until your current passport expires. But the current price to renew is £75.50 if you do it online and £85 if you fill out the paper forms. How long do I have to get a new Burgundy passport? Well, with the blue passports entering circulation during March, it's possible that if you requested a new passport right now, you'd still get a Burgundy one. So, if you desperately wanted another 10 years with the Burgundy design, then you could try and get a new passport before the shift happens. But there's no guarantee that you wouldn't end up being sent one of the first new blue ones instead. Will it really be made in Poland? It will indeed. For those not familiar with this fact, it's become a bit of a joke in the UK that the new blue passports are actually being made in Poland. In fact, further than that, they're being made in Poland by a French company. The contract was awarded to Gamalto, an organisation owned by French company Talis. Before 2008, UK passports were made by Delarue, but they lost the £260 million contract to Talis. That being said, the customization on the passports will still happen in the UK, and Gamalto say that they employ 500 people in the UK, so some of the work is still happening in Britain. There obviously isn't anything inherently wrong with this supply chain, or the origins of the passports, but it's just become a bit of a joke that the new patriotic blue passports aren't actually made in the UK, and still come from the European Union. Why change it when the burgundy looks nicer? Well, I guess this is all about perspective, and I'll leave you to decide if you prefer the new blue design or the old burgundy one. I suppose if you really prefer the old design, you could just buy a passport cover in the burgundy colour, and I'm sure someone's selling them already, and if they're not, I'm sure we could put some in the merch store. Oh, looks like someone beat us to it, and I'm not sure we'll be able to compete with that price point anyway. Why should I care about the colour change when I never had one of the old blue passports? Good question, and something I can relate to as someone who's never owned one of the supposedly classic, iconic blue passports. I've always had a burgundy passport, so to me that feels like more of a classic design. I suppose as with the loss of Brexit issues, it's all about perspective. This is likely a bigger issue to those who are nostalgic about the old designs, and have an emotional connection to them. Everyone has a different viewpoint, and for some older generations, this might be a bigger, more important moment in the Brexit process. We asked you if you cared on Twitter, and on the whole, people generally weren't bothered about the colour change, with a slight preference for the old burgundy design. How do you feel about the new blue passports? Will you be renewing your passport early to try and get the new blue design? Will you miss the old burgundy look? Does it bother you that they're being made outside the UK? Be sure to let us know your thoughts in the comments below. You can also get involved in the conversation over on Discord. There's a link to our server down below, and by joining, you can take part in discussions about all kinds of topics, from US politics and their 2020 election, to gaming and philosophy. Join the approaching 2,000 people on the server today, who are discussing a variety of topics from a variety of perspectives. You can also discuss our videos, and if you're a patron, you can access super exclusive bonus channels where you can talk to Team TLDR and other patrons. You can check out the Discord by clicking the link in the description. Of course, we'll release further videos on Brexit as it plays out, so be sure to subscribe and hit the bell icon to make sure that you don't miss a thing.